Okay, so I'm going to click back into my model. Okay, and as I noted, you know, last week that with the visual styles, if you find that it's moving really slowly and you don't want it to move really slowly, you can change the visual styles, you know, for example, from realistic to, let's say, conceptual or another type of um, visual style in order to make, you know, the processing of it a little bit faster. Okay, you'll see that it's moving faster now, but the one caveat about this is it doesn't show you the materials and their effects. You'll get that in realistic. Okay, but you won't get that um, so much in any of the other types of uh, rendering styles. Okay, the visual styles, sorry, no, not the rendering style, the visual style. Um, but what I want to do is I want to create a custom uh, material. You know, say I want to work with a material, but they don't have it in their library. And rather than trying to build it, okay, what I want to do is I want to essentially add a map to my material to show it. So I'm going to uh, click on default, okay, and I want to create a default material. And basically, what I can do is I can create, um, you know, a default material taking the properties of a ceramic or a concrete or a glazing or a metal, so on and so forth. And I can start to add um, my own specific uh, properties to it or images to it. So, for example, if there's a specific paint that I want to work with that they don't have the color for. Okay, you can change the paint colors in some of these. Okay, but what you can do is you can also create a wall paint and assign it with the color that um, you know a specific paint to be. So if you know the RGB values, you can do that. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving it a metallic paint. Okay, because I want it to be shiny and, um, you know, kind of a reflective type of material. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that up into my material editor. Okay, so this up here, what it does is it adds all the materials that I have in my model, okay? And if I ever want to clear it out, okay, what I can do is I can actually right-click on it, that area, and go to Purge All Unused, and that's going to clean it up with all the materials that are not in my model right now. Um, you'll see that my metallic paint one disappeared because I'm not using it. Um, but I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to bring it in, and I'm going to add, uh, there we go, I'm going to add um, a map to it, okay? So if I right-click on that and I go to Edit, what pops up is the Materials Editor, okay? And what it's telling me is that this is a metallic paint, okay? And if I expand these properties of it, Okay, it's going to tell me that it's a car paint. I can change it to a chrome or a matte or a custom. It's going to give me different uh, finishes. Uh, it's going to give me, you know, a type of finish if it has a pearl finish to it. Um, and also it's going to give me a color and a size. Okay, um, what I can do is um, I can change the color. Okay, um, I can double click on that and I can change the color here and give it, let's say, a blue or a purple paint, okay? Or if I want to add an image to uh, a material, okay? I'm going to close out of this, and I'm just going to use a default global material. So I'm going to go into my list, and I'm going to pick, let's see, generic, okay? Or I can use this global, and I can... Let's just use our global one since we already have it. I can edit that, okay? And now what I can do is I can add an image to it, okay? So I'm going to go back into my Google Images. Again, give the um, note that if something happens, I have no control over it. Okay, and let's look for, let's say, um, leopard print. Now, usually when I start to work with um, materials for um, these, uh, you know, for these, uh, you know, 3D materials. What I look for is not only the name of the print, but I can say seamless texture. And what this does is it essentially, um, you know, kind of separates out those maps that are, you know, created especially for this type of application. Okay, so I'm not getting like leopard print pants or leopard print shirts or anything like that. You'll find that a lot of people use these textures in order to add them to 3D modeling, which is very popular, okay, not only in 
um, design, but also in animation and all of that. So people are always looking for these type of what's called maps. Okay, so chances are pretty good that if I put in leopard print seamless texture that I get one that's seamless. Okay, because what it does is it essentially takes this map and it maps it across the material that it's assigned to. As long as it's seamless, you won't see any of the creases or the seams within the texture. Okay, um, but you know, again, it depends on, you know, it depends on the map. Okay, uh, sometimes I find that, you know, that's not true. And sometimes, you know, it, it does work. Okay, so if you find that there's a map that you um, want to use and you can't, you just have to look for another one. So, or you can create it in Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to go to search. Okay, and let's pick, um, I really don't know how seamless this is, but let's just pick this for the heck of it. Okay, or actually, let's pick one of these. <clears throat> now you'll find that with the Shutterstock, Shutterstock is a really popular um, company that does these, um, you know, images and prints and all of that. Um, you'll find that a lot of them will have their watermark on it. Okay, and if that's the case, you know, for example, like here, uh, you know, you probably have to pick a different texture to work with. Okay, so I'm going to save this image where I saved my sky. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is go back into AutoCAD, go back into my generic or global material, and under image, I'm going to select that box. Okay, and um, you'll notice that AutoCAD does have a, a place to store its textures. Um, this is within the computer. Okay, so I would always recommend that since we type tend to use the same textures over and over and over again, that you come up with um, your own, you know, folder for the textures that you want to use. Um, I'm going to go to where those files are. I'm going to chain, uh, select the one that I just created. Okay, and you'll see that what it does in this um, output in the, the preview is that it actually wraps it around. Okay, what I can also do is next to it, I can expand these options and I can go to edit image. And essentially what that allows me to do is to define, you know, how big it is, um, you know, the brightness of it, and um, how much it tiles to as well, okay? And that can help with actually um, trying to figure out how the map is going to map onto the surface. Now you'll see that it actually is smaller than the preview here, and you can see that it does look kind of seamless, okay? So it might actually work out. So I'm going to exit out of that, and this is already updated, so I'm going to just close my material editor. I'm going to select my model, and I'm going to right-click and go to Assign to Selection. Okay, now because this is frozen, on the uh, conceptual uh, visual style, okay, um, it doesn't show up. But when I change that visual style to realistic, that's when it should show up. So we'll wait for AutoCAD to refresh itself. And now we'll change our visual style to realistic. And now you can see that it updated it, and it should have that um, material on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my view to camera one and I'm going to go into render and I'm going to render that. So this one didn't take as long, um, but you'll see that now it has that texture on it. And what you'll also notice is that when I zoom out and I shift up, you'll see that my image is not there. Okay, and that's because the background image that we assigned to our um, view Okay, only shows up in the in the view that we assigned it to. So, for example, uh, if I go back into view two, okay, where we assigned it, okay, it'll pop up again because that's the view that it was designated to show up in. Okay, and that's why when we assign backgrounds, we always have to assign it to that view. Now, what some people do do, okay, is that they do um, a lot of times create a box in the background and put 
the, um, you know, like a, a image of a sky or maybe a skyline or something like that as part of, um, you know, their background, okay, as another way of putting it in a background like that, okay, and having more control over it. Uh, the only issue with that is, again, you know what they would have to do is they'd have to create a generic material. They would have to map that image onto that material, and they'd have to get it to fit. Okay, so again, they'd have to match with their image size um, the size of, they would have to match the size of the box with the size of the image. Okay, and that's how you get an accurate representation of it. Because what it wants to do is it wants to fold it, you know, uh, along the corners. Um, one other thing to note is that when you start to also use uh, flooring and other materials, okay, so for example, if I go into uh, flooring and wood floors, okay, and I go to edit that, okay, in my editor, you'll see that you can also pick what type of finish you want for it. So there's a glossy finish, um, uh, there's a semi-gloss satin, unfinished, and then what type of uh, furniture or flooring that it's used for. Okay, so with these materials, a lot of times what happens is they have these extra um, materials that you can start to add to it in order to make it, um, you know, a bit more customized. Okay, um, and, you know, there's some options with it. So that's also really helpful in trying to get a more real realistic type of look out of your rendering. In the end, when I went back and I rendered it as a presentation, okay, this one only took about um, a minute and 49 seconds to do, um, but it also has a small output size, okay? This is, um, you know, kind of middle size, but it's really not that big, okay? This might be like a, a not really like a five by seven, but maybe a four by six. Um, you know, and again, it's in pixels, so you can always calculate what you want that to be. But essentially, you know, if this is a big image, you know, if I change the output size to be a lot bigger, if the presentation is, um, you know, format is there and it's all nice and uh, crisp and clean and has a good, you know, uh, resolution, then to use it, what I can do, again, is just right-click on it, go into Save, and save it as, you know, let's say Final Image. And it'll save it as a final image, and I can bring it into AutoCAD um, using my XREF manager and attach it as a raster image to continue what we've been working on um, and to continue building our final set.